Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for being with me. And a big change, I want to get to this for a moment. El Nino is gone. We're headed toward a La Nina. Even during the peak of the hurricane season, this is August, September, and October. This blue shading is La Nina. So uh, we've squashed El Nino. El Nino. El Nino usually doesn't stick around too long, about 9 to 12 months. La Nina could stick around for a, for a few years. Uh, there's usually a period in between called the neutral phase that lasts several months. But this time we're just flipping over into La Nina and yeah that is typically bad for the hurricane season you see here in La Nina years a lot more action out there versus El Nino years but this does not necessarily tell us where the storms are going to go. So I don't want any alarming information out there. In a La Nina season, usually on average, there are 17 named storms, nine become hurricanes, and that's more than an El Nino season in which we'd have on average 11 named storms and five becoming hurricanes. So yes, the numbers are going to be higher. I do expect us to get well down the list of hurricane names, and here's why. In a La Nina cycle, uh, there's less wind shear out there. You don't have the crazy winds out there to help rip apart these things. Things. The wind shear is our friend in the hurricane season, so less wind shear would mean more hurricanes. But with that said, there are other variables like dust, Saharan dust, pockets of dry air, and we need to wait and see on that kind of pattern uh, to see if some of the storms kind of want to swing away a little bit sooner. You need to really see that current pattern at the time when storms develop. So it's a wait and see, and I'll just be tracking it for you, of course, uh, storm by storm. So going forward again, watching this moisture as we work our way uh, back toward uh, Bermuda, that's our leftover uh, tropical uh, area, tropical disturbance that moved by. And then this spot here in the Bay of Campeche, uh, watching that trying to uh, flare up, but still this moisture plume. Now this did flare up a little bit over the Gulf Stream like I was talking about. That warm water current uh, helped flare this up, but not organized. But you get the big tail of this from parts of Cuba back through South Florida and into the Northern Bahamas. Still that elevated chance of rain today. So let me track it for you as we go hourly. Uh, any additional rain. While it's not going to be like a couple days ago, of course, that's going to be too much uh, because uh, we're going to add on to some of the uh, flooding concerns, but at least the rain chance is going down some, but you still see that moisture around later today into tomorrow, northern Bahamas, south Florida, back into the western end of Cuba, back toward the Yucatan of Mexico. That moisture plume is around, and then as we work our way into the weekend, I'll watch this spot. This is Sunday. This is where we're going to see a buildup of moisture, and there are indications are a tropical depression or tropical storm could develop here. If it does, it would be moving into the direction of either Texas or Mexico by next week, but got you covered on that spot. So that's one of the areas we will be watching. So El Nino, that is gone. La Nina is, is moving into the uh, picture, monitoring the tail end of the system for additional flooding, especially again, Cuba, back through Florida, into the Bahamas. Now, we'll watch out for that Gulf de development. I showed you some of the moisture building in the Gulf. That's what we'll keep tabs on through the weekend into next week where a tropical storm could develop. And if one does, that would slide back toward Texas and Mexico. First name on the list this season, that is Alberto. That is the first name in the Atlantic Basin. So thanks for being with me, and I hope you have a good weekend ahead.